Henoch, Shonlin, Purpura, HSP is the topic. And what I'm going to try to do in this video is try to break this down so that when you are presented with this on a clinical vignette, then you can easily recognize it without too much difficulty. So there's four things that you will need to look at. The first is a skin rash, and I'll explain why all this happens very soon. The next are these joint pain uh, findings, joint arthralgias. The next is uh, GI symptoms, such as abdominal pain and abdominal tenderness. And the last one, if it proceeds, the kidney damage. So these are the four things. Now, why is this happening? What's this all about? Well, it's a pediatric disorder, usually most commonly between two to eight years of age. And what's happening is that there is a IgA containing immune complex. And this is causing the problems. It's depositing in small vessels. And when it does this, it does so in various areas. One of them is the skin, another part is joints, and another part of the body is the GI tract. And eventually, it can deposit in the kidney. And as a result of these immune complex deposits, you get a um, resultant rash, joint pain, abdominal pain, and kidney damage. Now this can be triggered most commonly on licensing exam, you'll see this because of a upper respiratory infection, a strep infection, and sometimes other things such as certain drugs or foods, but these are by far the most common. So you typically, like some child will have a upper respiratory infection, and then after that he develops HSP. So the characteristic rash, if we get into symptoms, very, very characteristic, purple, palpable, purpura is the type of rash. It's usually on the legs, on the feet as well. Very characteristic. The uh, joint pain is usually in the knees. It can be in the ankles and hips. And that's um, also going to be part of the clinical vignette. And then you'll have these uh, abdominal GI symptoms, abdominal pain and tenderness, which by themselves are very nonspecific, but if they appear in a child with purpura and arthrology as then you really start thinking HSP. Now usually that's it but in some cases it can progress to renal failure, kidney damage and that will present with hematuria, blood in the urine. So how do you diagnose this? Well for the most part the biopsy is what is needed of the skin lesions and what you're trying to find in this biopsy is basically the IgA immune deposits and that's characteristic of the disease. Another very important test that's much simpler is a urine analysis and that will help you um, detect the further hematuria and if there's any RBC casts which is a sign of glomerulonephritis. So very important those two tests treatment, interestingly, fortunately, it can be self-limited, meaning it can go away by itself. But for the most part, corticosteroids are given, and the most common one is prednisone. So, just to recap, because I really want to make sure you understand, HSP, a pediatric disorder, about two to eight years of age, it's basically an IgA immune complex deposits in small vessels and then as a result you can develop the rash in the skin, the joint pain which is the arthralgias and then the abdominal symptoms, GI symptoms. And then if it is very serious it can progress to renal failure or kidney disease. Diagnosis is done with the biopsy and a urine analysis, and the treatment is with steroids. So let's take a look at some clinical vignettes and see if we can figure this out. A uh, mother brings her five-year-old boy to the clinic because of a rash on his legs and buttocks that she noticed this morning. He has also been complaining that his belly hurts, but he has had no change in appetite. He had an upper respiratory tract infection, 
and sore throat about one week ago. He has not had any fevers, recent weight loss, or joint pain, and has not taken any t medications. Temperature is 96. Physical exam shows mild periumbilical tenderness and multiple 3 to 6 millimeter raised erythematous lesions on his lower extremities and buttocks. The lesions do not blanch with pressure. His leukocyte count, hemoglobin platelet count, coagulation studies are normal. Urine analysis shows 3 to 5 red blood cells per high power field. A rapid strep test is positive. Most likely diagnosis is. Well, let's see. Um, you got a 5 year old boy. He's got the rash. And it's, um, it's not blanching. So it's most likely raised, palpable. Uh, he does have abdominal pain. So he's got some GI symptoms, and he does have hematuria. The only thing he doesn't have is the joint pain because they know. I think it says here that um, he has not had any joint pain, but he does have three of the four. And then also, there's a very important clue that he had an upper respiratory infection one week ago, and he's tested positive for strep, and that is. Uh, the upper respiratory infection preceding HSP is common. So this all points to HSP. Next one. A seven-year-old boy arrives at the emergency room in acute distress. Over the past three to four days, he had progressively become ill, generalized fatigue, mild abdominal pain. Um, on physical exam, he has a macular papular rash on thighs and feet with some spread of the rash to the buttocks. The rash does not blanch and some of the lesions near the ankles look petechial or bruised. Temperature is 102. He has he is drawing his knees to his chest for relief of stomach pains. He is nauseated and vomited once before coming to the hospital. Semi soft dark stool, GOAC positive. The boy has not voided since early morning and cannot provide a urine sample. The doctor determines that he is 10% dehydrated asks the nurse to start IV fluids, which of the following most likely. Now let's take a look. We've got a seven-year-old boy. He's got some GI symptoms, mid-abdominal pain, um, nausea, vomiting. He's got the rash, and it's also a palpable rash. It doesn't blanch. And does he have any other... He's got some urine issues going on here, so possibly some kidney damage. So again, quite a few clues uh, pointing to HSP. And then finally, a six-year-old boy is brought to the office by his mother because of red rash that she noticed today. She says that three days ago he had a cough, runny nose, and fever that responded to ibuprofen. Temperature is 98. He has erythematous blanching macular rash on his legs. You diagnose him with a viral exanthem and vice the mother to encourage the child to drink liquids and use ibuprofen as needed for fever. One week later, the mother brings the child back to the office and reports that the, that the rash has changed. He now develops colicky abdominal pain, complaining of left knee pain, temperature is 99. Physical exam reveals palpable purpura of both lower extremities and uh, non-tender abdomen. Left knee is painful on flexion but is erythematous or warm but is not erythematous or warm there is a, does not seem to be an effusion gait is normal most appropriate study at this time is well again we got a six-year-old boy he's got the rash and they, they pretty much tell you it's purpura so he's got the joint pain and he's got the abdominal symptoms colicia so GI symptoms uh, and I don't think they're mentioning anything about the kidney in this uh, uh, clinical vignette. So that needs to be addressed because that's the fourth and final piece of the puzzle. So at this time, the most important test, you'd probably want to do a UA because the UA will let you know if there's any kidney involvement. Um, this is most likely HSP without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, he also had a respiratory infection uh, three days ago, and they talk about that here. And most likely, this has been going on because of that respiratory infection. It was a trigger. 
So the deposition of these immune complexes, IgA immune complexes, complexes can damage skin, joints, and the GI symptom, but if they go to the kidney, it can lead to nephritis. And because the kidney can be involved, we need to perform a UA to detect if there's any kidney involvement. And that would be choice D. Check for kidney involvement.